Welcome to the Set Me Free Radio Podcast. I'm Stephanie Olson, and I'm here with... Cindy Holting. And we also have a guest with us today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Joy Martin. Joy Martin is on Skype. We are very glad to be here with her. Joy is one of the co-founders of Set Me Free Ministries, and she told a story when we did our Count It All Joy event, which was on temptations and trials and things like that. And she told a very personal story, but a very poignant story, a story that really moved a lot of people. And so we want to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the subject of food, the subject of weight, the subject of body image, and what God desires for us and from us. And the the trouble that so many women have today, and men as well, on issues of, of eating and just really leasing that to the Lord. So Joy, we'd like to start with you just sharing your recent experience and what God has really pricked in your heart and a little bit about what you shared at the Count It All Joy event, because I think you have... A story that a lot of people can relate to. Yeah, well, for me, we Count It All Joy was an event we did on temptation. And when we first started talking about it, I thought it would be a great, great idea to find somebody who had a story of temptation that they were struggling with. We were having a hard time finding somebody to kind of fill that slot. And I realized at one point that I was probably the one who was supposed to share the story, which I was not thrilled about. It took me on a journey that I'm actually still battling with um, and have nowhere near come to the place where I have overcome it or feel like I have a real handle on it even yet. Temptation's an interesting thing because I think when we think of temptation, we think of alcohol or drug abuse. Affairs. Yeah, gambling, things like that. And uh, sometimes I wish that one of those things was my problem because it it seems like those would be not easier to overcome, but something that you can just walk away from. Right, because you can't give up food. You can't stop eating like you can stop drinking, like you can stop gambling. Yeah. So instead, I'm, I'm faced with this struggle that I... Instead of just, um, and not just like it's easy to give up drinking or drugs or any of those things, but instead of having something that um, I can battle against in its entirety, instead I'm, I'm found in a situation where I have to battle something that I just, I have to live with on a daily basis. Right. And I don't even know for, for, for me when it began or how it began. I when I was a little girl, I was overweight, but I, I wasn't obese as a child. Um, I I think sometime in elementary school, I probably became the chubby kid in class. And it's, you know, kind of haunted me since then. And I don't even really know why food is an issue for me. I just know that it is. Um, and I think kind of... Um, Probably the biggest thing that I've realized as I've kind of journeyed through this and um, tried to figure out what my struggle with food looks like, um, I think the thing that struck me most was that food is an issue not because um, I of what I eat or how I eat even necessarily. Um, I think it looks different for everybody, but for me, it's an issue because I don't have control over food, Um, Mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways, I have found that it controls me. So do you consider your food issue an addiction? Yeah, I suppose. I don't know that I've ever 
maybe admitted to that word in, in my head. Um, but I suppose it would be to, in some ways. And I think anything that kind of controls you and that you put above other things is, is an addiction of some sorts. Mm. Um, but I think the most profound thing that I have realized is that it's a problem because anything that controls us has a potential to put a wedge between us and God. Oh, that's good, yeah. <laughs> and and that's the biggest um, kind of epiphany, I guess, I had. Anything that controls us has kind of become a God to us. Yeah. And so... I, what I've realized is that is that is why food is a problem for me because hmm. it's a controlling force in my life and therefore in some ways and in some instances it becomes a god of sorts as harsh as that sounds to say. Yeah, but I, I can really relate to that because Cindy and I have talked about this a lot. I have issues with food. Cindy has issues yes, with food. I have food. The issues with food also. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily manifest in a um, something that is visual. You know, we don't necessarily look like we might have issues with food, but we do nonetheless. And I know that there are times when I really am feeling emotionally depleted in some way I'm I'm tired I'm I'm sad I whatever it is and instead of turning to God for comfort and taking that time to spend time in his word spend time in his prayer in prayer spend time in worship I turn to chocolate or whatever comforts me and so yeah that is putting another god before us absolutely because we're not turning to to Christ for our immediate needs so where are you now with this? What are you, what are you trying to um, do to change your struggle? That's a really good question. Thank you. Um, I am still kind of in the midst of the struggle. You know, I, for a long time, I looked at it as, as a weight issue. Um, and so I figured if I could lose the weight that I'd been struggling with um, for so long, then that would take care of the problem, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of what I've come to grips with is that the weight is just a side effect of the, the bigger problem. And um, that's really unfortunate in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, it would be a lot easier if, uh, I could just lose the weight and then have it all figured out. Um, I'm kind of a habitual dieter and uh, have ha had some really great successes on diets. Um, in fact, in, was it 2011 that we went to Disney? Yeah, is, yeah, I think so. Yeah, my sister and I, our parents um, took the whole family to Disney World and in preparation for that trip, my husband and I thought it'd be really great to lose some weight um, to prepare for our trip and so we signed up for a weight loss program and um, we both jumped in just feet first or really head first I suppose yeah. just all in and uh, we're really successful and I was able to lose about 40 pounds before we went to Disney and lost another 25 after our trip and um, was thinner than I had been since, man, college, probably. Then life just kind of hit, and I, I stopped the program thinking I could just continue on um, on my own. And slowly in my mind, but quickly, I suppose, when you look at it um, in the grand scheme of things, gained most of that weight back. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was something that I didn't even realize was happening. And so now I find myself almost back to where I was before that journey that I fought so hard through. And so now I'm kind of at a place where I don't, I don't know what that looks like. And I, I try something and then I realize that that's not working. You know, we try to eat very clean. We try not to eat processed foods. You know, we eat a lot of 
organic and a lot of whole foods. And uh, I think that's helped health wise a little bit in our family. But I, I honestly still struggle on a daily basis with with what a healthy relationship with food looks like. Well, and I think that's really hard when you've been, it really starts in childhood, I think, if, if um, we're comforted by food, if we're, um, you know, I know that I, I lived with my grandparents very early in my life until I was six and with my mom and my grandpa was an eater and he was a gourmet eater and he would take us to restaurants but he always said that food was an entertainment to him it wasn't you know something that you did to stay alive but it was truly entertainment and i and i learned that and so today i love eating i love and i'm guessing that's you know part part of your your experience joy because Although I'm older, we grew up in the same family, and you right. didn't live with Grandma and Grandpa, but, um, you know, that... Well, I was going to say, I can. I, th- I was thinking of Grandma when you were saying that, and I don't know if you have this memory, but I have a very, very vivid childhood memories of walking to her into her house whenever we could go visit in the summer, and I think the first thing out of her mouth was, would you like a sandwich? <laughs> I mean, seriously. And, and she would make you a sandwich. Yeah. Or is that just not my memory? <laughs> I always went for the cookies. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I want to read a scripture. I think this is so poignant. And this is um, something that I've really used with with my food issue. Because, I, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've... I know what I was a smoker. I was a heavy coffee drinker, (laughs) all those things. So I know what it's like to get the coffee wasn't, I'm not going to go there with the coffee, but I know what it's like to give up things. But my issue with food uh, had, and I was an anorexic and a bulimic for many years, but the food issue for me was really difficult to give up because like you said, Joy, you can't quit eating. That's another problem. And so it's it's really challenging to try and, I love what you said, have a healthy relationship with food. So this scripture really speaks to me, and it's Hebrews 12, verse 11. Now no chastening or discipline, is what that word means, seems to be joyful for the present, but painful Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, yeah, nothing, no discipline is, I mean, it's painful to discipline ourselves, and but it, it yields a fruit of righteousness. Any thoughts on that, Miss Cindy? No, I was just going back. I love the stories of the families because I grew up in a family who loves to eat. We would travel hundreds of miles to go for certain types of food. Right. We, we, I live, grew up in, um, in Los Angeles County and we would drive up near Santa Barbara for tri-tip for meat. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's how I grew up. Right. Yeah. Cause you food. were in Nebraska. No, I did not grow up in Nebraska. <laughs> right. You can get good meat anywhere in Nebraska. Yes, yes. Yes. Well, yeah, I agree. So, so Joy, what do you think that has to do with our body image? <laughs> Body image is a weird thing. Again, I think that's something that's different for everybody, and, and I not everybody struggles with body image, but for those who, who do, it puts a definite wrench in the whole problem. Um, for me, and I actually wrote a blog about this not too long ago, I have a very distorted body image of myself, Um what I realize now, having lost so much weight and then gained so much weight back in a relatively short period of time, is I don't feel or view myself as looking different. And I I know that's hard for some people to understand, but um, 
even though I know that I was healthier at my lowest weight a few years back, um, I was more active. I was exercising and enjoying it. I was able to run on a treadmill and um, do things that I I couldn't do at my heaviest and that I struggle with now even. I, I know what clothes I fit into then and that I don't now. But when I just look at myself in a mirror, I don't necessarily see a person who is drastically different. And I think that's what part of the reason my weight gain was masked from myself because I, I wasn't seeing a physical change, even right. though I knew one was taking place. Right. I mean, I saw the numbers on the scale creep up. But in my head, it wasn't that bad. And I wasn't looking at it as 20 pounds from, you know, three months ago. I was looking at it as a pound from um, three days ago. Mm. And so the, the change wasn't registering as drastic um, in my gut, in my head, as as it was in reality. Right. So, okay. The blog you wrote was called through his eyes. Okay. And it was in September. So if any of you want to go to that, you can just get on our website, setmefreeministries.net. And then all you have to do in the search page is uh, type in through his eyes by joy Martin and you'll find it, or probably even just through his eyes and it'll pop up. But you said something, there's two things that really struck me, and I just want to read these to you because I'm I, I, I'm wondering if they're connected and how they are and what you think about it. But to quote you, you said, for as long as I can remember, I've struggled with my weight. I haven't always been quote unquote fat, but I've never been quote unquote skinny either. I can remember being teased ruthlessly as a child for being heavy. I have one vivid memory in particular, being taunted by my good friend's brother. I couldn't have been more than six or seven at the time, and although I wasn't a petite little thing like a sister, I wasn't huge either. And even if I had been, I certainly didn't deserve the ridicule he threw my way. And then you go on to say, the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, words will never hurt me, isn't true. And words do hurt, and they leave scars and and really deep wounds. Um, so, can you touch on that for for a second? And then I want to go to another quote that you said that it's almost reverse opposite, and I I just find it so fascinating. But what do you think about that? The um, the teasing and what what did that do to you? The wounds that were left there. Yeah, I think a lot of that does go back um, to, you know, when you hear things like that, you end up with this internal dialogue, I've heard it called, where, you know, those things kind of just replay themselves in your head. But yeah, when you hear those things growing up, you, you, you come to believe them. Whether or not they're true is a whole different story. Right. I was, you know, I was a pretty shy kid. I wasn't very outgoing. I wasn't athletic. I um, have always been kind of a homebody. So I, you know, I'm the girl who preferred to stay home and read a book or whatever rather than, um, you know, go play sports or whatever, you know, but at that age, I, I mean, I knew I was, um, bigger than my friends, but when you're, you know, in elementary school, you don't really understand either body structure and, um, not even that I would, I, you know, I think even then still I was, a little overweight for what I should have been, but I, like I said, I wasn't an obese child. I was just a chubby kid and right. probably should have just grown into myself, if that makes sense. But in, instead, whatever this weirdness with food became and however that began, um, you know, I just 
continued to gain weight as I got older, as opposed to growing into my childhood chubby self. And, you know, I realized that I, um, because of, of body structure, I will, you know, you and I will never look alike. You know, I will never be a size, um, two. I will never, uh, you know, I may right. never even look good in a bikini or, you know, feel comfortable in a, a swimsuit or whatever. But, and I've come to grips with that and I'm fine with that. I really, at this point in my life, just want to be healthy. Right. Right. Um, and I realize that looks different for everybody. It does, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I. who knows if that's how how it first began, kind of that teasing as kids. But I think that definitely does continue to play in your mind, even, even into adulthood. Right. And I think as women, it's really hard because what you said, that healthy looks different for everybody. That's so right. important. Because I think we're bombarded with images as women, little girls, of images of these um, photoshopped models. Right. And, um, you know, it really sets the tone for what we think we should look like. I remember, uh, I watched a lot of TV growing up, and um, I just remember uh, seeing every actress on TV, everybody that I saw was really thin, and that's... right. That was my that was my model. That was my my what I strived for. I never achieved it, and I've had to accept that it's not going to happen. But that's okay. Just like you, Joy, I'm never going to be a size two, and that's okay. Right. Well, you even think about the toys we play with the kids. I mean, mm. You look at Barbie, and um, my my four year old right now is in love with all of the Disney princesses, and I mean. Disney is guilty of of perpetuating that same that same thing, you know. You look at the, the Disney princesses in the lineup, and they're all these tiny, wasted, curvaceous, right. long, flowing hair, and I mean, it's just everywhere. It's ev- it's yeah. everywhere. It is, and it starts very young. We yeah. are we are bombarded with this extremely early in life. But, um, but it is important to be, I think there, there is an excuse that goes around sometimes that we don't need to be, um, we don't need to be healthy. And I think that is something that God really does call us to be. That's why he doesn't Mm -hmm. want us in part to turn to food instead of him, but you know, our body read, do you have, yes. um, So I have, um, you know, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we've got 1 Corinthians six nineteen. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So we do. We, we need to be healthy, but we need to be healthy according to the Lord's standards. Right. Um, I have another scripture here, uh, Romans 12. Romans 12, 1, um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which, whoops, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect and perfect will of God. And that just struck me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been really praying through this because I struggle with food too. And I, I have out of control eating um, in the evening and I've put on weight over these past few years and it scares me. Um, but I need to really surrender that to the Lord. And it is hard, but I need to also realize that my body is not my own Oh, and yeah. I need to offer it as a living sacrifice. So I need to be healthy. But I also, I love this, do not be conformed to the world. So I am i cannot compare myself like to, to the world and to right. the world's standards. I need to, I need to be right with the Lord. Yeah. And it's a daily 
journey. It's a daily battle. It's a daily surrendering my body to the Lord. Exactly. So this is kind of funny. You mentioned Barbie's joy. (laughs) A Barbie doll, if she were scaled to human size, would have unhealthy measurements of an 18 inch waist. 33 inch hips and a 36 inch bust compared with the typical 19 year old girl, which would be 31 inch waist, 33 inch hips and um, a 32 inch bust. So Barbie is not even remotely. Am I allowed to say this? I even heard that with those measurements, she wouldn't be allowed. She would be able to have a period. I oh, mean, her, gosh, her, yeah. her, her body She'd would be, be sick. Her right? body would be so messed up. It wouldn't even function properly <laughs> <laughs> on that monthly cycle, <laughs> which is bad. If you want to have babies, <laughs> well, wouldn't she be like six foot two or something? Yeah. Like I think they give a height. I no, they don't have a height here, but oh. she, but they do have a, another, he created a Barbie that would be normal looking. Um, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. so it's very interesting. Oh, we're looking at pictures. That yeah. is cute. Oh, she's so adorable. <laughs> she's definitely more realistic. Google it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so that other quote that I wanted to, to read to you, Joy, I just want your thoughts about this. And I find this so fascinating that you were you were criticized early on, um, but then... When you started losing weight, you said this for a long time during my weight loss journey. And this was the most recent one, I believe no one outside of my closest circle said a word to me about the weight I'd lost. I knew I had lost weight. I could see the numbers on the scale going down. I could hear the women at the weight weight loss center. Tell me the number of inches I'd lost. I could feel my clothes fitting differently. And yet no one around me seem to notice. And you say you would think that didn't ma- wouldn't matter to me, but it did. So talk about that a little bit because I know when you looked in the mirror, you said this earlier, I believe, you saw someone who didn't lose 65 pounds. You saw something totally different in the mirror, and it was almost as if those other people um, which did not include close family and, and stuff, um, close close friends, but the other people in your life that didn't even notice, prob- did that, did that um, uh, add to your, your image issues, uh, what you saw? Yeah, it probably did. Um, I remember talking to you about this at the time it was happening, and um, because it was it was odd to me and um, was disappointing mm-hmm. I because I know in my head that the change was drastic. You know, and I, I understood it for the first 20, 25, maybe even 30 pounds because um, I think sometimes people are hesitant to say, oh, you look like you've lost weight. Right. For fear that they'll offend if you haven't lost weight. So I don't know if that played into it or not as to why people weren't acknowledging it if they just didn't feel like they knew me well enough to acknowledge Mm -hmm. it. I wasn't public at all that I was on this program for a long time. Um, Just my family and, and like immediate friends knew. Um, but you know, then even when, cause we were on the diet through Thanksgiving and through the Christmas season. And I remember having a kind of a, a party at my house for a mom's group that I am part of. And I had one woman over and I was very careful about what I was eating or not eating. So people asked me if I was on a diet and I I think that's when I first kind of told people that yeah, I was doing this program and it was pretty strict and um, but even at that point people didn't say, oh, you know I thought that you looked like you lost weight. It wasn't really until I was 50 or 60 pounds in probably that um, 
people finally started to say something to me. And then actually a friend of mine from, from church um, started to call me skinny. And that was really unsettling for mm, me. Mm-hmm. Which you wouldn't think it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was. It was um, uncomfortable to hear even. But yeah, I think, I don't know, it's, yeah, like the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. You know, you, you feel ridiculed when you are heavy, and then you don't feel recognized when you have started to shed that weight. Yeah. And I think it just reinforces <clears throat> that internal thought process for me that why am I even bothering when nobody notices it, if, that, if, if yeah. it's not visible to anybody, what do I even What's care? The point? Why don't yeah. I just enjoy myself and and take away the stress of having to right. know exactly what I'm eating all, all the time and controlling everything when it when it's not making a difference anyhow. Well and I do think oh go ahead, Cindy. Well, you know, it just it just struck me. Um when it doesn't make a difference anyhow, mm. but who is that making a difference to? It's not right. making a difference to who, though, because it, 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 all that hard work, it does make a difference to us and our bodies and to you. But who are we trying to please? Are we trying to please right. the world? And I'm guilty too. I mean, right. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, I mean, that just struck me right now. I'm like, whoa. Right. It's like, who are we trying to please? Yeah. We need to be pleasing the Lord. Whew, that, that's I, true. Just, that's true. I, I do think it's for some reason it's easier for us. And I totally agree with you. But when you get that motivation that when people are constantly saying, oh, my gosh, you look great. Well, I think it spurs you on. I agree. But interestingly enough, I had a friend who lost a ton of weight and I commented on it and I said, oh, my gosh, you look great great. You've lost a lot of weight. Now, I don't know if I said you look great, but I commented on the fact, I I mean, I probably did, but, and maybe that was the offense, but this person got so angry with me and said, I am so sick of people commenting on how much weight I've lost. It's as if I was just huge before. And then I felt terrible. And then you're like, okay, do I say something? Do I not say something? Yeah. Do I, you know, it's hard to know sometime. In fact, when, and this is a different story, but when I had, I, I had a, a miscarriage when I was five months pregnant, of uh, the very first pregnancy I had. And then I had my daughter very uneventful pregnancy, but then I had three losses in a row after that. And I will never forget that I told, after the second loss, I told them, uh, this group that I was a part of, that I was pregnant again, and no one moved. No one said anything. They were like in this state of shock, like they didn't want to say congratulations or Oh, I mean, nobody even said, let's pray for that baby, you know, not one person. And they were just kind of shell shocked. And I think sometimes people get like that with things when, oh, I don't know if I say you look great, if you're going to be offended and, you know, they get confused. Well, and, you know, I, we all respond differently. I, I, I worked in the weight loss field and um, I hear that a lot where I, it just, it's such an individual basis and you never know what you're going to get because we have people that come in and, and when, when you tell somebody, okay, they've lost, let's say they lost a bunch of weight, but they still have like maybe 20 or 30 pounds mm-hmm. to go and someone says, oh, you look great. Sometimes it's a deterrent if you say, oh, you look great because you've still got more right. more weight to lose and you don't want to settle, but you just never know. It's right. so individual and, and that is hard. That's hard on both ends. And right. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but you know, it goes back to let's love, love one another and yeah, be supportive, be and supportive respectful. and respectful. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go to a hard place. Uh-oh. I know I'm good at that. 
Okay, so, you know, we talked about why God would want us to be healthy. And, you know, one, it glorifies God. It's his temple. But, um, you know, you'll have more energy. You'll be better equipped for what God has in store for you. And one of them is that you will be a good witness. Now, interestingly enough, Gluttony, which is spoken about in the Bible, which is considered a sin, is the most acceptable sin in the church today. And so I think that's really challenging because you don't want to talk about why it's important to be healthy and that, you know, that could potentially be sin, but just, but it would be no different than if I were to go out and get drunk, you know, try and go and speak to a group of women. So it's a really tough thing, but being a good witness is so important and keeping our body fit, you know, what, what, whatever that means for your body is so important. Okay. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to oh. turn this on Stephanie, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I think it's so important when we do have these women's events or whatever, yeah. whatever church gatherings we have that we provide good quality yes, food and yes. not so much of the chocolate, oh, the chocolate and the cookies and the sweets and the, that kind of thing. And, um, because it, it is a problem and some of us have a hard time saying, no, I'm, I cannot eat just right. one cookie. It's, it's either none or it's a dozen cookies right? or chocolate I'm or you, whatever. It's my thing. Yeah. What do you think about that? Joy? Specific to the events? That they yeah. I mean, now I'm curious. And I mean it's, all it's of that. It's a hard one because would you serve wine at an event? No, I wouldn't, uh, but I have a funny story <gasps> for you. Well, I was actually thinking about yeah. that. <laughs> but, you know, as a ministry, even though drinking is not a problem for all of us right. on the team, um, we know it is for you. And so... I like for instance I I never have why I never serve serve wine at a dinner or a function where I have invited you into my home right. because I know that's a struggle for you and so that's a really sticky place that that's that's tough because what do you how do you deal with that right I I don't expect people to not offer dessert at a meal because meats are my downfall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But um, that's, I don't know, that's a fascinating... Yeah, it is, because Romans 14.21 says, It is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. So this is not saying don't eat meat and don't drink wine. It's saying if your brother has a... Because, you know, back in the day when Paul was talking about this, there were kosher Mm -hmm. people that he would minister to. And so he was saying, you know, if something is kosher, even if this person is not or whatever, you have got to be respectful of their needs. Right. Now, um, you know, drinking wine, for example, I am so, there are churches right now that are starting to do this. There's one where they've created a Bible study in a bar or created a Bible study so the guys can drink. It's called like Bible and Brew or something like that where they're offering, offering beer to the guys so they'll come to Bible study. Well, you know what? If somebody offered me beer to go to a Bible study before I got sober, I would have gone. It gives you justification to drink. And so that's what's called not making your brother stumble. 
I'm just thinking of the discernment that's going to come out of those Bible studies. Yeah. Well, I bet they're just loaded <laughs> with, with, with awesome stuff that the yes. Lord is telling them. The Lord. New revelation. New revelation. <laughs> God is talking to God us today. Dear revelation is what that's <laughs> right. called. I just had to throw that in there. We digress. Um, well, and it's, it's really been on my heart um, with our events that yeah. we're doing to really kind of turn that. And not that we don't have dessert because, I mean, every, we you know, do provide we do. healthy meals. Yes, yeah. but, but I am just really set on let's let's offer some some healthy options. Let's offer some fruit and some vegetables, and that's why I love my popcorn because popcorn is is a munchie. Well, we could put popcorn on the table instead of chocolate, as long as the speaker's table had some chocolate. Okay, just saying, <laughs> it's important. No, wait, we're just cutting back on the chocolate. Oh. They don't they don't need four bags of chocolate at each table. You. Just yes. you know, a few chocolates. Oh, okay. the, I'm not against okay. chocolate. No, I'm with you. I, but I do think that we as believers have to think about those things. Right. And I think we we sometimes think about them with things like alcohol or other th- but we don't a lot of times think about it with food. But we absolutely have people in the church, people in our ministry teams that struggle with food. And is it fair to go to Cheesecake Factory with them for cheesecake if that's their right. stumbling And you're also you're dealing with diabetics. You're dealing with people with right. health issues also that, so that really can't have those that really, I mean, if they were to have it, it could be extremely right. toxic to their bodies. And the reality is people with addictions, and if we're going to call food an addiction um, or we're going to call alcohol an addiction or whatever... Those people will do anything to justify what they're doing. And so if, if somebody is offering alcohol at a biblical Bible study or whatever, that is going to be a way, well, these people drink, so I can drink, certainly, even though I have a problem with it. You know, I mean, that's the same with food. So it's, yeah, that's interesting. You're speaking volumes to me. <laughs> And I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier about it being kind of the acceptable sin mm-hmm. in the church. Right. Uh, when I first revealed to people that I was going to be giving this message, I had people question me, well, why, why, why can't it just be that you like to eat? Why does it have to be a problem? Right. Right. Why? why Those are the ones that don't that have that a problem. Way? Yeah. Uh, even after I gave my message, I had a whole slew of women um, come who were very supportive and, and had um, advice and, and books to recommend and, and things to kind of help me on my journey, which I was very appreciative of. But I also had some people who, some people just don't get it. Yeah. They, they view it as, oh, that's all? I thought, right. because at the beginning of my message, I talked about how um, I kind of had this, I'm a, I'm a writer, so, so I write dramatic build-up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, at the beginning of my message, before I revealed that my issue was food, um, I talked about how I'm not an alcoholic, so I can't, I can't tell you um when I experienced my first drunk. I'm right. not a drug addict, so I can't tell you when I had my first high or when I, I realized that that I I was hooked on a drug. I'm not a compulsive gambler, so I can't tell you when it was I realized I I just I couldn't I couldn't get over the thrill of the of the risk taking because my issue is food. And it for some people I think they heard that and they were like what? You know, like, what? Girl, that's not a problem. That's just you like to eat. You know what I mean? And so there are a whole lot of people who don't get it. Right. They don't get it. And yet, isn't um, isn't obesity one of the, like, second to heart disease for death for women, isn't it? Well, well, and you think about it, you think about all of the things that obesity causes. There, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. Obesity can lead to heart issues. It can lead to diabetes. Correct. It can lead to all of these things exactly. that are right. 
that kill. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I just want to say, you know, Joy, your message was so powerful at the Count of All Joy event. Um, I had several people tell me that, that you really spoke to them. It really spoke to me. Um, and, okay, I'm going to ask Stephanie out loud. Is her message on the website? You know what? It's not. And it, thank you for saying that. We are. We like to wait to see if we're going to do Count It All Joy mm. in a... Um, year again but i'm going to get those on the website so this will be our whole count it all joy event okay. um, messages on temptation but also joy's message which was so poignant and it was just a yes. beautiful message and it really touched so many women's lives and i still have people coming up to me I, I don't know if you do but coming up to me saying your sister was that message was mm -hmm. so amazing. So I um, encourage anybody out there who struggles with this, um, with just food, food issues right. or a lack of control with food, to go and listen to her message once once we get it up there because it, it will speak to you. It is powerful. Well, and I will I will definitely get it on the website. I will let you all know via Facebook when those are on the website. But I just want to read one more. This was something that really I don't know that I I I read a lot when I'm struggling. This is Paul again and he's saying, "But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be um, disqualified." That is huge. He is saying that I am going to discipline my body and bring it into subjection so that when I'm preaching to you, you don't all look at me and say, well, you don't follow God. Right. You know, that's, that's huge. And that can be, that's discipline in the body as a whole. Um, whatever, whether it's, you know, food, whether it's what we put into our bodies in terms of drink, um, anything. And I just want to say, as we go through these this food journey or um, this he being healthy journey, it is a journey. It's not necessarily a destination. Right. It's a lifestyle. And I encourage, you know, make small changes. You know, seek the Lord. Make small changes, one little change at a time, one little change a week. Um, and I was reading the other day, it's like we, re we reap what we sow. And if we just sow in, you know, eating a banana instead of a cookie every day or, or, or eating fruit instead of the sweets each day right. um, or a vegetable, grab a vegetable once, you're sowing a seed there mm -hmm. and, and, and you will reap that. So it's not about being perfect. No. Um, it's about a process. It's seeking the Lord and it's slow lifestyle right. changes, behavioral yeah. changes. And one of the things we see too, and, and Joy, you know, when people lose weight really quickly, their minds, their brains don't catch up with that. Mm -hmm. So this whole weight yeah. process, it's a process, it's a journey. And I see people all the time where um, it, it, t it can take, you know, a year for them to go, wow, for their mind to catch up with their bodies where they see themselves, wow, I really did lose this weight and, I, and I'm okay with the way I look now. Right. Right. Well, and, you know, I look at a couple scriptures that are just like bringing it back to go to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, Philippians 1, 6 says, For I am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. So mm -hmm. not not right now, you know, not in a second. But also, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that just reminds me, you know, with my struggle of, okay, I'm going to go to chocolate, I'm going to go to, you know, a plate of nachos, or whatever it is that I'm looking for comfort in, in that moment. Um, and he provides that comfort. He provides that rest. And I think sometimes when we're just shifting our focus, even if it's just for a moment, we can combat that right. temptation. Yes. So what do you guys think? Anything else you want to share on 
weight and body image and because you know it doesn't make us feel great when we're over consuming and that can lead to things like depression and mm-hmm. it can lead to things like you know not not really wanting to I don't know it's just it's a very it can be a very ugly thing. What do you think, Joy? you have anything else to add? Nothing profound, really, that is jumping out at me right now. I think kind of the bottom line for me is that I was kind of chuckling to myself as you were talking about my message, because I think it's maybe something I need to listen to again myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it is, it's such a journey, and it's one of those things that you want instant gratification for. Yes. And, um, I, man, I don't know. It's tough. I think, I think you're the one too, Cindy, when you said that it's your brain takes a while to catch up. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. It's, it, it's like just when I think, think I kind of have a handle on things, I realize that I don't. Right. And, um, what I've realized and what I'm continually having to remind myself of and go back to, for me at least, um, and I would venture to say that it is, this is true for all addictions and, and, and food issues and what have you is, um, I realized that I, I needed to, to give up the idea that I could do it on my own and that I could just take yeah. control of the situation, and just power through mm. and, you know, eat just tiny amounts of food and, and exercise a lot. And if I, if I took control enough and if I tried hard enough that I could, I could do it. I think that's why I had such, such success in, in the short term. Right. Uh, is that I was just bound and determined to, to meet this goal that I had in my head. And then what I realized looking back is that I, it is something I clearly cannot do on my own. It feels really odd to to look for help from God with something as fundamental as eating. Yeah. But um, for me, that's just a necessity, and that's still that that struggle and that balance I'm trying to find. Even now, almost a year out from giving that message, right. is. I can't, I can't do this on my own and I don't even know how to ask for help, but I know I need it. And I think that's so powerful because we can't do any of this without the power of the Holy Spirit moving through us. We're human. We have no desire for even seeking the Lord without him drawing us to him. So I do think that's really profound that the Holy Spirit's got to do the work and we have to be willing to allow him to do the work. So that's that's a huge statement. And an excellent one, Joy, to close our podcast on. We just so appreciate your taking the time and joining us for this podcast because you bring a lot of wisdom to the table. Um, so we do appreciate it. And thank you, Cindy. So we are going to say that we enjoyed our time with you go out and make disciples we'll see you next time 